infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. The Food and Drug Administration recently approved a new antibiotic into the arsenal for treating serious acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections. Uh, it's called Delafloxacin, and it goes by the trade name Baxdella. And it's manufactured by Malenta Therapeutics. Now, joining me now to talk about the importance of this approval is James McKinnell, M.D., Dr. McKinnell is an assistant professor of medicine at the De- excuse me, David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Dr. McKinnell, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, excellent. Well, this, uh, of course, is great news for clinicians and patients alike. Um, can we start out with um, a question for the audience? Um, What are acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections, and why do they present such treatment challenges? Well, thank you very much for asking me. I think when doctors use our diagnostic languages, sometimes we make things a little bit more complicated than they have to be. Acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections are infections simply of the skin and the underlying surfaces. You know you have a a, a skin infection when your skin is red, hot, uh, tender, it sort of has that warm touch. Sometimes you can get a deeper infection that we call an abscess, but other folks may call a boil or a rising. That's a large size pimple, if you will, but they can be very, very large. In terms of treating them, the vast majority of skin infections in most healthy patients are relatively straightforward to treat. Sometimes in patients with other medical problems, they can be much more complicated. And that's where this drug is is potentially having a great impact uh, in that arena. Now, cellulitis would fit into this category, right? Absolutely. Cellulitis is another complicated way of saying infected skin. An area of cellulitis is typically a flat area of infection, and that's in contrast to those sort of larger pimple things I was talking about, those abscesses. Okay. Now, what types of organisms are most likely to be implicated in these types of infections? For most healthy patients who get an infection, it's usually either a streptococcal species or a staph species. The audience is likely familiar with something called MRSA, or methicillin-resistant staph aureus. That's a very common problem uh, that we face, particularly in those larger abscesses type infections, those big, uh, those bigger sort of swollen infections that we're talking about. Now, as an infectious disease specialist, um, this approval must be ex- exciting news for you. Um, what can you tell the audience about this antibiotic, Baxdella? Baxdella is a, an, an option for treatment that offers efficacy against the, the streptococcal species and the MRSA uh, infections that are uh, most common. But what's unique about this drug is it also adds coverage for some of the gram-negative type pathogens that may be causing these infections. Right. It's, it's that combination of efficacy with the safety profile that we like. Okay. Um, now, uh Bancomycin is often the treatment of choice for MRSA infections. Um, how does um, Baxdella compare to vancomycin in the treatment of MRSA infections? Well, there's two things here. I guess specifically in MRSA infections, that's important to consider. And we have clinical trials that have shown that patients with skin infections can either receive this IV drug, Baxdella, it can also be oral. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was seem to be non-inferior or about equal to IV vancomycin plus as trianam. And so that's good to see that this drug works as well as that combination IV formulation. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to see that we have an option here that's IV to oral. 
uh, that was pretty well tolerated. And again, the unique thing here is that Baxella covers those MRSA infections and, and treats those, but also treats the more complex gram-negative infections that we see from time to time. All right, so uh, for the audience that may not be familiar with the terminology, we would call that a broad-spectrum antibiotic? It's a relatively broad-spectrum antibiotic. It, it does cover multiple bacteria, so yeah. in its space, it does have, have, uh, have good uh, coverage for the bacterial pathogens that we worry about for most skin infections. Right. This is not what I would consider one of our last-line agents. This isn't the one that uh, we would go to in, in uh, highly, highly drug-resistant scenarios, but it does have a broad range of activity, so I would agree with that. Okay. Now, like with any drug, antibiotic or otherwise, there's always the potential for side effects, and uh, there is a concern about uh, fluoroquinolones, um, like the older drugs, like, say, ciprofloxacin, um, concerning you know tendon uh, tendon issues, tendon rupture, and that kind of stuff. Do we have these same concerns with Baxdella? Yeah, like other fluoroquinolones, Baxdella is in that class. So a lot of the traditional risks of that class, including, like you mentioned, tendonitis, tendon rupture, peripheral neuropathy, central nervous system effects, we, we worry about those in fluoroquinolones. Um, one of the sort of most worrisome side effects of fluoroquinolone is something called QT prolongation. And to kind of summarize this, the drugs can actually affect how your heart works and how the heartbeat gets transmitted to the various portions of the heart. What's actually really exciting about this drug is that Baxdella doesn't seem to impact that. It seems mm-hmm. to be pretty safe in terms of how the heartbeat's transmitted. So there's, there's not much, there's no warning for this QT prolongation thing we worry about. Oh, that's great. Um, so that's very nice. And it is actually. And then the, the additional thing there is there's some skin side effects of fluoroquinolones where you're sensitive to the sun. That also seems to go away. But the, the real kicker, the real safety signal here is with the, the early data on QT prolongation, that's very encouraging. All right. All right. Well, uh, lastly, uh, Dr. McKinnell, any final thoughts on this drug approval? Yeah, I think it's really important that the, your listeners understand that every time physicians have the opportunity to add another antibiotic to our arsenal, it's a very unique tool. It's, it's a very important portion of how we're able to better treat our patients. We know that antibiotic resistance is a huge, huge problem. And the more tools we have to fight these problems, the better off we're going to be. So it's a nice addition to our armamentarium. Great. Good way to sum it up. Oh, well, thank you, Dr. James McKinnell, for your time and expertise, sir. I appreciate it. Great. Thanks a lot. I appreciate your time. All right. Take care.